Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope this finds you well. This week's Parsha is Tazria. So in last week's Parsha, Shemini, we talk about the death of Nadav and Avihu, yes, Aaron's sons, who were Kohanim. But also we talk about cleanliness and uncleanliness of uh, animals, and which animals we can and cannot eat. And so in this week's Parsha, we talk about cleanliness and uncleanliness of, uh, of humans. And it doesn't really refer to physical cleanliness, like is there dirt on your hands? But it refers to a ritual cleanliness, a ritual purity, or impurity. And when we talk about purity and impurity, the right word really isn't pure or impure. It's the English translation that we have. We have tahar, which means uh, pure, and uh, tuma, which is impure. And uh, what is impurity, ritual purity or impure, ritual purity or impurity? Um, it really has to do with if there is an object or a person or a substance or whatever it is that has had contact with something that is a separation from life. So, for example, um, a cemetery is a place of tuma, a place of unclean, of, of impurity, because it's a separation of life in this place. Um, and so, what, a place of purity, a place of connection, is a place that is connected to life. Um, so, ritual objects such as the Torah or you know other type of, of, of you know holy books that sort of thing those have a connection to life and a connection to holiness and therefore they are considered pure so those are things that are talked about in this week's Parsha. Um, but also, we're coming up on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the beginning, the first of the month of Nisan. And uh, Nisan is known as uh, the Chodesh Haviv, the month of spring. And this is because it does happen, usually in the spring. Um, it's associated with Pesach, because on the 15th of Nisan is Pesach. So uh, we first get the mitzvah of marking the new moon, actually, with the uh, invocation of the month of Nisan. And this, is, this happens as the Jews Jewish people are leaving Mitzrayim as they're leaving um, Egypt. They uh, get the first mitzvah as the Jewish people. And why is it the first mitzvah that they're given as the Jewish people? We know that it's the first mitzvah that they're given as the Jewish people because it's the first time that they're referred to as B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel. Because they've just left Egypt. They're no longer slaves. They're no longer living in that in that place. They are now their own individual people. And the patriarch, the most recent patriarch from their time in Mitzrayim in Egypt was Jacob. Because if we remember, um, Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, ends up in Egypt and ends up rising very high and then his family comes over and then Yaakov Jacob comes over and lives part of his life in Mitzrayim but again the big the biggest patriarch of the time is Yaakov so we become B'nai Israel. and the first mitzvah that we're given like I said is the mitzvah of marking the new month of marking Rosh Chodesh and so what a lot of people interpret that to mean is that the first mitzvah we're given is to keep a calendar is to keep track of time there are a lot of things in Judaism that help us to keep track of time. The fact that we have um, times daily for that we can do certain uh, services. There's a time that you can start doing the shacharit service, the morning service, and there's time that you can no longer do the shacharit service. There's a time that you can start doing the mincha, the afternoon service, and there's time you have to stop. And same thing with Mari, the evening service. There's also certain times, uh, certain times in the morning when you can begin saying the Shema, and certain times at night when you have to stop saying the Shema. We are we are very much are people regulated um, in in time because of our Ritual. Um, we have Shabbat every week. That's a weekly thing that always happens. And we have Rosh Chodesh every month. And then every year we have Rosh Hashanah. So we mark time in these very exact ways. And so it's, I think it's very beautiful and symbolic, this idea of marking of marking the month. And the reason that it's the, we don't really know exactly the reason that it's the first mitzvah. But if you can imagine if a people is just finally emerging from slavery, of not really living the same lives that they've lived before, lives that they don't have any, any control over. Once they've emerged from uh, this place, they now have control over their lives when they didn't have any control at all. And when you're a slave, you get up when you're told to, you eat what you're supposed to, you take a break when you're supposed to, you leave when you're supposed to, all, all the, that kind of thing that's associated with being with, with slavery. But now we are free people. We are B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, freed from its rhyme. And now we have the privilege of having a calendar. I love the idea of Rosh Chodesh. As some of you may know, I do have a Rosh Chodesh podcast. So do be on the lookout for that. Um, the month of Nisan is associated with the, with the zodiac sign of Aries. Um, and so there's a lot to be discussed there. But it's a very freedom-filled month. The concept of chayrut, of, of uh, freedom, is very much invoked in this month. And we also have the holiday of Pesach to look forward to, which is just happening in just a few weeks. Um, so Shabbat Shalom, and I hope to speak with you all next week, God willing.